and this should be on. Hey, what's up guys? So today we're gonna to be going through one of my favorite problems and that's gonna be the number of islands problem. So basically what this problem ends up being is that you wanna try and find the number of islands uh, given a matrix filled with ones and zeros. So this is a really common problem at places like, you know, Microsoft, Amazon, Google. So we can go ahead and switch over to kind of see like the actual problem statement. We read it again. You basically have this matrix filled with ones and zeros where one is land, zero is, you know, water. And the only way that uh, a one is connected to another one is if it's, you know, uh, to the left, right, or it's, you know, up, down. In this example, you know, you're given like a bunch of ones here and then they're all kind of connected. So you get output of two, right? Cause there's only really one island here. And then the one below you end up having these kind of ones in the top left corner and then ones at the bottom right. So there's an output three. And then the main reason for that is because you have this kind of diagonal, you know, connection, right? Which makes this one over here in the middle, its own distinct island. Um, a lot of people definitely struggle with this problem but I found that it's one of the best cases for using DFS. Some people struggle with the idea, but really I think the coding is the main part of this. If you think about this problem, what you're really doing is you're starting off at one place and you're kind of expanding outwards, right? And then you want to repeat and do that for every single one that you can find. What does DFS tell us to do? You start off at the top left and you're given, you know, a bunch of ones, you see a one, what does that really mean? A one kind of signifies that you've started an island, right? If you want to try and find all of the other ones connected to this one, you kind of just want to keep repeatedly going up, down, left, right. And eventually if you recurse on that, you should kind of get the idea that you'll find one island, right? until you get to the point where there's no ones left. Usually when you have depth search search, you also have the option of running breadth first search, but between the two, I think if it's a simple problem, you don't have to worry about memory, then usually DFS is the one you wanna go for just cause it's a lot simpler to code out. Cause if you're using BFS here, it'll have a separate queue, which is a bit more complicated than just running the same function over and over again recursively, right? What's the main ideas we have in this problem? We have that we want to look through every cell in the matrix when we find a one we know that we've started on a search for an island okay so that means that once we find the start of an island we want to explore the rest of it exploring the rest of it can be done by running dfs the things you care about when you are trying to do this exploration step is one, how am I starting? We already talked about that as soon as we find a one. And then how am I terminating? The terminating clause is that there's no more ones to explore, right? So that lets us say that our termination for DFS should be based on when we don't have any more ones to explore. And all we should have to do if we're running DFS is, uh, you know, keep track of the places that we've already visited, right? If you're allowed to mutate the matrix itself, then you do have the option to modify the ones and a zero so that you don't revisit an item. But I think typically you can, you shouldn't assume you should clarify that you're not allowed to modify the matrix. And that'll usually be the case, in which case you'll want a separate set to keep track uh, visited items. Really the idea that we have for this problem, it's most of it really comes down to coding. So I think we can go to that and then really come back to the complexity later on. Let's call this def num islands in the matrix. Uh, what we said we want to do is have a search from some X and Y. And this is going to be our DFS part, right? We just keep track of the number of islands. And then we should just have to return the number of islands in the end. When we talked about going through the matrix, what we said is we start at the top left, try and go all the way to the bottom right. So we can have an outer loop, which is just for y in range zero to one of matrix, and for x in range zero one of matrix of zero. There is an edge case here, but uh, and that's mainly that if line of matrix is equal to zero, we just return zero. All we really want to do here is, again, just run DFS, right? So search on x comma y. So we'll have a visited is equal to an empty set. 
Okay, that's the main kind of structure for this problem. And the core is really implementing the search, right? The one thing I missed out is I want to increment found islands. Uh, so if you're looking at this, and usually after you write like a block of code, I'd say it's usually helpful to just kind of like skim over it, see if it makes sense before you proceed. We look at this and we see, oh, we've actually missed something. We said we'd only really end up looking for a full island if it turns out that the value is a one, right? So we see that if matrix y of x is equal to one, and x, y, not invisited. In that case, we'll go ahead and run our search and then we'll increase the number of islands. Okay, so we got to this point um, and we talked about earlier, but what is really our terminating condition for the search, right? It should be that we're at a zero. Otherwise, we should continue the search. So if we say that matrix of y, x is equal to zero, we just return. Otherwise, we go out in all four directions. One thing I found that's really useful for these kind of matrix problems where you kind of want to do a loop through all the directions is you define a separate array, which just has the four cardinal directions and you can loop over it. The alternative is you write each of the if else conditions for, you know, first going to the right then the left then below, then above. So just have our directions uh, clear cut right in the beginning. So there's what left that is right. Zero, negative one, and then zero, one. These are your four directions. And you can kind of just like loop over them, right? For delta x, delta y, and, and directions, updated x is equal to x plus delta x, and y is equal to y plus delta y. Here's the part where we decide to recurse. You say, um, you know, if x, y not in visited and it's a valid is valid uh, x, y, then we want to just recurse again. Search x, y. And of course, as you're going through doing this, uh, all the way through, you want to, you know, add to your visited list, right? Visited add x, y. Cool. So most of this seems pretty okay. I think you can reason through it and say, oh, I'm starting off. I have my outer loop, which is just going to go through all of the items in the matrix. If it turns out that the item is one and I haven't visited before, then I want to start my search and I found one island. When you do search, you say, oh, is it a zero? Yes, I'll return. And then at this point, I add that cell to visited. I want to go out in all four directions, which we've defined using the directions matrix. If we haven't visited and it's valid, then we search. So this is a separate function where valid means that the item is in bounds, right? So let's just define that is valid x, y. So if x is less than, y is less than zero, or y is greater than or equal to the lambda matrix, we return false, x is less than zero, or x is greater than or equal to the len of the matrix of zero, return false. Return true, and this is just to make sure that we're not, you know, searching outside of the bounds of our matrix. Looking through, I think that's mainly there. The one thing you probably want to check on is where you add this visited. So this might actually end up being a bug where it turns out that you need to add your visited earlier, which is when you actually end up doing the search, or it could be that you add it to the search and then you miss the very first item. We'll skip out maybe on testing for this one. Uh, in your actual, you know, solution, you should probably go through some test cases to verify that this is all right. Now, there's the complexity part, which we kind of skipped out on earlier, but I think is also really useful for these matrix problems. So I find that a lot of times figuring out the complexity for a recursive problem or something that's operating on a matrix, it's, it's a bit harder than when you just have an array, right? Like if something's n squared or n log n or n, it's really obvious I want to say when it's just an array right but here we have a recursive problem that we're doing on a matrix right so typically when you have recursive problems the easiest thing is to kind of imagine the branching factor of your recursive calls so if you had a for loop that is branching four the way that we are here you would imagine that it's something like four to the end right because you'd end up doing the work repeatedly on four subtrees but in this case that's not really happening, right? Because we only end up revisiting items and redoing our DFS if we haven't gone there before. And the way to really think about this one is 
you know, how many items in the matrix am I really visiting, right? And how many times? And when you think about that, really, you should only be going to each item in the cell one or two times, right? Potentially two, because you might run a DFS to get to a cell, and then you also have your outer for loop, which is gonna go through it again. So here, the complexity runtime is n times m, right? And same with space, because you might just have a matrix that's all of all ones. And in that case, your recursive stack is gonna to grow to that size. So this was a super short glance at this problem. I think for an interview when you're not as familiar, it would take you know a bit longer to kind of get how it works out. I'd expect that the coding portion is probably relatively simple, even though it's longer. But the main idea that we kind of try to take away is that, oh, I have to go and do a search. Therefore, I probably want to run DFS here. And um, yeah, I think that's it. If you guys have any questions about how this is done, feel free to leave a question in the comments and uh, I'll try to get back to that.